audience ever. <laughs> great, what a great reception. Thanks, everyone. Um, I am Alicia Ibarbo. I'm a producer on the Today Show. I'm going to pretend I'm going to do my very best Hoda and Kathy Lee for you guys while I'm here. Um, such an amazing panel. I know uh, the ladies were all introduced as such. I'm going to go over and I'm going to read a little bit about each of them because um, you, we're quite blown away by the amazing um, power that is here. Okay, I'm going to start with Randy. Randy, New York Times best-selling author. She's the founder and CEO of Zuckerberg Media. She's a mentor on this amazing little oxygen show called Quit Your Day Job. And she's the host of Dot Complicated on Sirius XM. Sh uh, actually, Zana, senior fashion edit editor at Marie Claire, E! News fashion correspondent, and co-founder of Milk Makeup, which you can find in Sephora. Very big deal. And Shazi, founder and CEO of Happy Family. It is one of the largest and fastest growing um, baby food, organic baby food brands. Um, and they just celebrated their 10 year anniversary on Mom's Day. And look at Shazi, uh, pregnant, ready to roll. We've got a July due date, so we're very excited for Shazi. Um, July, right? July. So I want to talk to everyone here because we are celebrating moms and working mothers and female entrepreneurs. And I want to know after listing all of that, where do you find time to be moms? <laughs> Let's start with that. All right, great. Well, first of all, I don't look back <laughs> or that cute when I was pregnant. I just went straight from like looking like I ate too many cheeseburgers to looking like I was the house I lived in. Um, but I, for me, I think, first of all, people always ask the question, how do you balance it all? And um, I, I have a mantra that I kind of repeat to myself in the morning and it says, work, sleep, family, friends, fitness, pick three today. And uh, because you're, you can't pick all five as much as we'd like to, as long as it balances out in the long run and the scales kind of tip, I think you're okay. But give yourself permission to be well lopsided on any given day. I think it's so true. I think we're, we're very tough on ourselves. And I, you know, I wake up and think of all those things and I think I have to achieve them all. And it's not practical. And um, it really is about balance, and it's, it's, it's such a cliche, but it is be kind on yourself, be kind on other women who are in your situation as well, and realize that probably me time goes out the window. It, it, you know, and if you're going to have me time, that might be the dinner with friends, but then that's going to take the place of surfing the net that night or shopping on Netta Porter. That's good. It's, you have to pick and choose and be very edited with your time. Ken, you have two-year-old twins at home, right? How is that like, though? It's amazing. That's, I mean, that, those oh are gosh. two bosses at home, and sometimes you can't say no to those bosses. You're so right. They are definitely ruling the roost right now. Um, it's getting harder in a way to work and travel. Like, that's the one thing I'm really noticing now. I used to be, when they were small, I went back to work really early on, like two, three weeks into after giving birth, I was on a shoot, and it was weird. As okay. one does two weeks after having twins. <laughs> Duh, obviously. It was probably a really <laughs> ill-advised thing to do. Um, but I am actually finding it harder to work now because they are acutely aware that mommy's away for four days and the FaceTime is fine, but they, I still get, like, there's a certain punishment when you get home and it's a certain hugs of daddy and the nanny. And that's heartbreaking to any mom. But, you know, a few hours and a few treats later, it's usually okay. Um, <laughs> It really is about, you know, just the balance and really figuring it out. And I, I am not the voice of this. Quite honestly, I am, I'm st there's still moments I feel terribly guilty and I'm not doing the best I can. And, and I think your advice about picking three of those six things, it's really good advice. I'm, I second, I think Randy's advice is great. I think just being uh, happy with yourself as you are and not expecting too much. Yeah because it's just life isn't actually perfect. And when you become a mom, it's not gonna get more perfect, it gets like more imperfect. And you just kind of have to roll with it and, and try to be happy throughout. Because if you spend time being guilty about anything, it's just such a waste of time. 
you know, you have, we have, given that you have so much more to do, why waste your time feeling guilty? It's like you just got to roll with it and enjoy this beautiful new gift because being a mother is like, it's a new job, but it just, it's, it happens, it's so natural, and all of us figure it out. So I think that's the, that's the thing is you're, you're going to be the best mom ever because you just are. I mean, I unless know. you do something really terrible, but I don't. <laughs> I don't, don't break them. That was the rule they gave me in the hospital. Just don't break them. You'll be fine. Most of you have been so career driven from school on, um, and you've always known. I, I've always known. I always knew in college I wanted to be a television producer. Like I was dead set. I never knew when I wanted to have children. So how did you each balance that? Okay, I'm at, I'm at a point in my career, maybe not the time, uh, perfect time to have children, but I'm going to go for it. So how do you balance that career, and I'm on a track, and maybe I'm on two tracks or three tracks as your bios share, how do you then decide I'm going to make an additional track and that's going to include family and baby making? I mean, I don't think anyone chooses when it's time to have kids. I don't know. For us, uh, it was like a one-time happy accident when it first happened. In the year my son was born, I think we were the 17th fastest growing business in the country that year. And it, it was insanely hard. Same thing, C-section, two weeks, back to work. And I think the thing is, if you're building something, you're going to sacrifice something else. And in my case, it was sleep and probably like quality nutrition and friends. friends and but but on the other hand i built something that i'm so proud of and i think today it really actually positively impacts the lives of so many children that it was totally worth the sacrifice so i mean i think no matter what you know when you're being creative and building you're sacrificing something but the point is you get a stronger return later and I think it's just keeping that in mind because it's not always going to feel good as you're doing it. Randy, where on that roster, best-selling author, CEO, Zuckerberg Media, I've got this oxygen show, where on the roster does mom come in? Oh my gosh, well, mom is always at the top of it, but it's, you know, I, I, I really adopt that well lopsided mentality. I actually, I just got back two days ago from Kuwait. I was there for the first ever women in business event in the country <laughs> that they ever had. It was, I mean, it was amazing. It was so, so exciting to see it. Also, I mean, it really makes you feel like in some ways in this country, we're so ahead. In some ways, we're we're very behind the rest of the world. But um, so I feel, I feel really lucky to be able to, to have, one, to have a partner that supports that. But two, I mean, you said um, from the time you were little, you wanted to be a television producer. I think for me, I never really had that, what am I going to be when I grow up that I knew. Um, I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. And I think part of being lucky is just having your eyes open, having your eyes open when opportunities strike, when you're the right person to fill that opportunity. And so for me, I've always just kind of wandered around the world with my eyes open. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope my children have that same um, kind of lust for adventure in life. And hopefully this is their normal. This is, you know, some people go home uh, to, some kids go home and have a mom that's there. Some kids go home to a mom telling them stories from her time in Kuwait. And it's just, you know, it's, a, it's, it's the normal that you're used to in, in your household. I think if kids know, it's to, it's to that point exactly. They know mommy's always gone to work, right? So no matter how guilty I feel, like, that's their norm. And they, they are very used to that. And it's giving them an amazing work ethic, I hope. I'm providing for my kids. And, and just, it's, it's empowering as women, and, and I have two girls, and I want them to know that this is the way that, you know, it's very possible to do everything. So I think to that point, it's very true. Yeah, I would, I would say one thing is when you become a mom, I think you become so much more efficient at everything in life that you don't, that you compartmentalize, you're quick with your conversations, it's no more like long chit chat, you like, you get it done so that you can be there and hold your child and love them and be there for them as much as you can. And there's something nice because I think it made me a, a better business person because I can just get it done. Yeah. Both my husband and I said that they, actually the year we had twins, 
um, both of us had never had a more successful and uh, just a year in our lives. Yeah, and I was, we had actually twins, yeah. That's good to know. So, everyone, you are all under six years, kids under six. Shazi, you've got, six. I think, the oldest one. <laughs> um, I have a 13-year-old and 11-year-old. And, you know, working where I do, um, it's often 12-hour days, 14-hour days, and there are days I get home and I've got a little bit of a bitchy on. You know, my attitude is not always the most positive. I come home and it's immediately my 13-year-old will say, you know what, Mom? Whatever happened at work, you got to let go. He gives me a minute. He says, go into your room. Yeah. You, you Take can a mommy time out. Go in your room. You've got commercial to commercial. He knows I love housewives. <laughs> so it's always on the DVR. Give yourself commercial to commercial while you get your PJs on and come back out. And I go, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, he just gave me a timeout. Um, but I relish it. I appreciate it. It gives me a moment to check myself, change my attitude, and, and figure out what really is most important. But you guys, I'm wondering who does that for you? Who's able to check you and say, hey, you know what? Something's not right. Maybe you know, refigure. Go back and rejigger. I think your son needs to come over to my house. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I find the only way to do that is by putting the phone away. Um, it's because if that's around, I am not present. I am not in the moment with my kids. I'm looking at that and it's binging in the corner. Even if it's on silent, I know it's there and I know things are happening. If I go and put that in the bedroom, then at least I can be present and in the moment with my kids. For those two hours I'm going to get before they go to bed. I feel really lucky because I have an awesome partner. My husband is like a, he's like a cool, calm, collected yoga guy and just always nice. And he's kind of like a puppy dog. And it, it's hard to be mad and frustrated and exhausted around him. So it's, for me, he's kind of like my foil. And I, I highly recommend getting a, a ridiculously supportive partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, First, first of all, I love the mommy timeout. I'm definitely stealing that one. I need it. But I think um, I think social media does an interesting thing to us during the day because I think we're reach. We constantly all day we have people test, text messaging us, emailing, Facebook, link. Like you're getting hit from every source, and it wears thin on your patience. Even if you don't think it's wearing on your patience, it does. And then I find I come home and I like snap at these beautiful little creatures that I love who did nothing wrong because strangers were taking up all my patience all day. And so I, I just really try hard. Um, like I, you know, when I get home, I say, okay, like, let's put all of that aside. Let's focus. But it's really hard. It's hard in this world we live in where we're always on and always reachable. Um, shameless plug, I recently wrote a book called uh, Shoddy Mom. Gosh, I can't say the real title. Shoddy mom for all seasons. And it's basically just allowing yourself to laugh at those less than perfect parenting moments. I want to know right here and now from each one of you, what is your shoddy mom moment? When did it happen and how? I had one on Friday. So I said I, <laughs> I said, I just got back from Kuwait. It was this amazing experience. I was like, I am nailing this. This is so awesome. I walk into my son's school and the teacher said, so did your son, you know, say anything to you today? Maybe about how... He was the only kid without a parent there this morning at Shabbat at school, maybe. How, like, maybe you want to show up? And I was like, wow, na super not nailing it right now. <laughs> um, and that was kind of that, that mommy My, guilt oh and just God. wrench the heart and all, yeah. all at one. Yeah. By the way, he did not mention anything about it. He didn't? He, it, it didn't even bother him. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is literally happening probably as I speak. I'm texting with nannies because I failed to book the nanny knowing my husband has an event and I have an event. So if anyone wants to babysit tonight, <laughs> two really sweet two-year-olds. Oh, at least your son or your he husband. Sounds good. Or my husband. Yeah, so I mean, it's that. It's the coordination. It's the balance. I need spreadsheets with babysitters because we do rely on them and they're amazing. And I'm thank goodness, you know, we're a dual family. We're both working and we can, you know, we can have that luxury. But um, just organize yourself, Santa. Oh, my God. <laughs> we like to say um, if kids are iPhones, babysitters are the batteries. And you got to have a lot of batteries, a lot of backup batteries for the backup batteries. Yeah. 
I'm trying, like, trying to avoid this because um, <laughs> I have so many. I'm going to go another route. Okay, it's about to get a little serious. So my, my son has autism, and I'm an awesome mom. And I don't, I like, it sucks sometimes, and I do some really crazy stuff for him. But I just, I'm really good. So You're amazing. You're I'm amazing. Like, I'm not going to say that I'm a shitty mom, because I just, I'm really good. You're great. You're great. No, you're great. And, and that brings... That brings challenges and that brings conversations and conversations that a lot of other people don't have to have. And, and that, that strength. I mean, how do you and your husband um, bring that? And you're very open about it. Oh, totally. You're open about it. Well, I mean, before I was pregnant, I used to drink a lot. And, like, now it's really hard because I can't. <laughs> you know? um, and, I, like, but it's good that we're rich now and we can get really good wine because when you're drinking, like, no Shitty wine, it's yeah. not as good. But, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, honestly, like, we, we make the most out of life, and he's a really happy, awesome kid, but it's really, it's hard. And I think in our society today, I mean, one in 50 babies born today will be diagnosed with autism. So there's going to be more and more parents like me that should never feel guilty because basically our world is changing in a way that's really affecting these kids. And we have to do everything we can to protect them and then love ourselves so we can be in a better position to help them. So that's why I'm not going to say I'm a shitty mom, although I've, I've done some bad things, but I'm, I'm okay. But, that's, but I do think we have to talk about it because it's, like, it's hard when you're around a lot of other parents and they have totally neurotypical kids and great experiences. And like, my experiences are really different. <laughs> well, and that's, that's the only way the conversation moves forward. I mean, you know, we all, we all are sharing, and especially in Manhattan when everything is hypersensitive, you know, we are all sharing these stories with the hopes of getting the word out and, you know, keeping on communicating. I mean, I, we just had a, a, a Shabbat um, <laughs> Friday night, and the whole topic was on autism. And one you know, in 26 speakers boys in. in yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, it's a very big deal. It's yeah, a very big deal. One in 26 deal. boys in New Jersey. And yeah. that's, yeah. So it's our environment, so. Yeah. yeah. I do want to switch gears, though, and, and talk about Randy. Uh, Back in the green room, you were talking about, on the Oxygen Show, Quit Your Day Job, um, how you were saying, I said, how's it going? And you said, well, I think I was a little mean in the last episode. <laughs> what do you mean by being mean? Um, I want you to explain that, because a lot of times when you are a bold person and you share an opinion that's not always positive, you just said, I was being mean. It's, that, that, it's a very interesting point, and I'm, there are two objectives that I have on this show that are sometimes conflicting. The first, I'm, I'm really proud of this show, uh, Quit Your Day Job. It's, it's like Shark Tank for millennial women. Um, and, I mean, there is no other business show on television where you see so many women and so many ethnicities that are represented as entrepreneurs and as serious business professionals. So, on one hand, there's a part of me that signed on to this show because I want to support women. I want to support, I want to show America that an entrepreneur is not just a guy, you know, a white guy in a hoodie. I want to show, uh, you know, not, not talking about anyone specific or anything. Um, I want to show America that entrepreneurs come in all shapes and sizes, that they come from every socioeconomic status and every look. So there's, but at the same time, I'm not doing anyone a favor giving lip service to entrepreneurs. And uh, there are also people who are watching the show who are watching it because they want solid advice. Maybe they're, they want to get inspired to start their own uh, business. So I feel like I'm always doing a juggling act between supporting the entrepreneurs who we have on the show, but also real talk. Right. And I don't think being honest is being mean. It's actually like a gift when someone's honest with you, especially if you have a bad business idea because they're saving you from what could be a nightmarish, bankruptcy-ridden disaster, you know? So we're almost out of time, <laughs> but I wanted to, uh, off of that, people come to you, I'm sure, all the time asking each of you ideas. What do I do? How do I do this? What's your best, just quick advice on, on breaking out, starting something? Um, for me, it's, is there a great idea with a proven market? Can you, can you 
actually execute and provide a great service that people value? And then are you passionate about it? Because if it's all of those things, that's great, and you can just make some money, but do you really care about it? Because that's when it's a home run. And I'd also, I completely agree with that, but to add to that, um, find the people to work with that you can really relate to and you get on with. I've, lucky enough, we've just launched Milk Makeup, and I work with two working moms who have kids the same age as me, and it's an incredible culture that we're building within the industry, within our own little industry, to help others who we bring on, and that's super important as a working mom. First thing I look for is passion. It's a difficult road to be an entrepreneur. You have to get up every morning loving what you're doing. The second thing is I look for someone who's focused enough that they're not going to get distracted by everyone with an opinion, but at the same time, not so focused that if the next iPhone drops tomorrow and changes the game, that they couldn't completely pivot their business model on a moment's notice. Okay. Um, we're about to go to questions right now, but I want to, uh, so, so those of you, uh, hopefully there are some questions in the audience, but I want to ask you guys, no. I'm sure you've been told no before, so how do you motivate yourself to either ignore them or tweak the idea, or what do you, what do you say to the word no? No back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think if you're hell-bent on doing something, every no is just, you know, uh, a next step to a yes, so you just got to keep going. I, I mean, I love hearing no because it, it fires me up, and uh, I feel like in my life, and most women need to learn to say no a little more too. That's one of my New Year's resolutions for this year and every year is to get better at saying no. Perfect. All right. Any questions in the audience? <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. Um, can you share your thoughts on the fight for equal pay for women? And what are some hobbies that you enjoy during your downtime? <laughs> Two separate. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> well, I think women should get paid more because I think they're doing two jobs at once. And I think being a mom makes you a better leader. So okay. in my company, <laughs> In my company, uh, first of all, it's probably majority women and actually majority new moms. But um, but obviously the pay is the pay is as great as it can be with so many benefits to really support moms. And I think that's what we as a society should be looking for in our businesses. Um, I mean, I, I don't have any hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea of benefits as well for me that the single mom issue and the fact that New York State are really trying to help single moms now is very important and it's so you know i think for under over 40 percent of single moms live underneath the poverty line and that's just disgusting and it's not they're the people who need help in work to really help them thrive i am um, i just featured on my radio show these adorable girls who had a bake sale at their high school where the guys had to pay a dollar for the goods and the girls 77 cents oh, <laughs> um, i think i mean it, it's such an important issue that you raise um for me, I mean, I feel like I'm taking even one step back from that, which is just trying to get women into the room in technology and entrepreneurship because you can't even have a discussion about equal pay if there's no women in the room to, to talk about it. So um, I think we, you know, the conversation it needs to start really early and we need to be doing more to encourage girls to go into tech, into entrepreneurship, into leadership roles like that where they can uh, advocate for change. Beautiful comment. Hi. How's it going, ladies? Uh, first of all, I want to say you guys are all badasses. It's so cool to see you guys. Um, I was saying, uh, what's the best piece of advice that you guys have been given in your whole life? Oh, my goodness. Pick it on. Um, one of the, my favorite pieces of advice in this age where we all see what everyone's saying about us all the time on social media is that you're never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad as they say you are. So take everything with a grain of salt that you see. Um, I think it's an old cliche, but feel the fear and do it anyway. And I think you have to do that, being a mother, being a worker, just being an entrepreneur. It's, it's always going to be there in the back of your mind, just, just power on through. Um, I think mine is super cheesy. It came from, like, Sesame Street. <laughs> Ray, Ray Charles, cool. believe in yourself. I don't know if you've seen that Sesame Street with the I best have. of Elmo, it's too. Really good. Everything <laughs> leads um, back to Elmo. But well, we have time for two more questions, but also to answer that, uh, probably my best piece of advice ever given to me was just ask. 
So many times as women, we are like, oh, maybe that's not the right time. Or maybe, okay, I need to reformulate that in my head. Just ask. And nine times out of 10, you know, it's either a negotiating point or it's a, it's a, an answer, a yes or a no. But going out there and doing it is hard. Um, it's an honor Hi. to have you ladies here as my mom is a hardworking mother of five and I'm the oldest so five. to see this is so much hope and it just keeps me to go. Um, I have two questions. I'm a young woman that moved here and in, in faith and entrepreneuring and, and I've been really blessed. What is what are three characteristics that you look for in young women and, and men or for entrepreneurship or leadership that you would give? if they were to work on your team. I'm currently reading um, a book by Micah Brzezinski about women and their rights, and she interviewed a lot of different CEO women about the women wage and all of that. So my question is, what are three characteristics that you look for in young women that are ra rising up that could like walk in your shoes and as best as you can? Um, I'll start, I mean, undying enthusiasm. For absolute, like never, you, it, I don't care what you're being asked to do, just, say yes with a smile and get on with it. And that's exactly how I got where I am. Um, uh, I suppose being kind and being nice. There's no part, I'm not a fan of bitches. I don't think it gets you anywhere. Um, I think people are you know, built up in a company by morale as opposed to being beaten down or the fear factor. Um, and thirdly, uh, let me say, being creative. Think outside the box. You know, people often, you know, especially in corporations, you work within these realms, but if you have the power and ability to think outside the box, you'll find outside the box solutions, and I think you'll be rewarded for that. I would say, uh, to echo some of that, have a good good attitude. People, people remember the people who were fun to work with and nice to work with more than they remember specific projects that you did. I think um, don't be too above grunt work. Even, I mean, in my own company now, I'm both the CEO and the janitor <laughs> of my company. Um, you never rise above the grunt work and you should never you know, treat other people like you're above it. And uh, Third, I think, um, you know, what I was saying before about passion is just to, you know, be in jobs that you're passionate about, and, um, and if you're not, go find one that you are, or create your own job that you're passionate about. I mean, all of these are good. I, I would add maybe uh, being independent. Like, I love the, the women on my team. Like, we're, in a way, we're charting new territory every day, and I love it when someone... Um, you know, like make something happen and they don't ask for permission to do it. But if something goes wrong, they have the attitude of, well, I'll ask for forgiveness if it doesn't work out. It's just really cool to see people be really creative and confident and take ownership and chart their own path. I love, I love girls and women like that because I know they can do anything. Um, so that was beautiful. One more question. Hi guys, thanks for being here. You guys Hi. are wonderful, lovely ladies. Um, I'm an identical twin. I'm a twin too, so good luck. <laughs> in give the me future. advice. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. I'll see you in a minute. Also. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering, since it was Mother's Day this past Sunday, did you guys do anything fun? Oh, I worked. <laughs> and then I worked, but the two, so they didn't really know. Next year I won't. I promise. <laughs> Mother's Day, I feel like, is a little bit of a cruel joke because, like, I, I was like, let's go to brunch. But I picked the brunch place, booked my own reservation, got the kids ready, like, changed the diapers, did everything. Like, by the time we were halfway through the day, I was like, I'm exhausted by Mother's Day. It's like, have this day where mom does everything. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit of a cruel joke. But even crueler for my husband, whose birthday fell on Mother's oh, Day this year. I mean, his birthday always gets overshadowed, but I mean, I don't even think one person acknowledged his oh. birthday this year. So well, he's like, next birthday. to the chores, so it's okay. <laughs> right. uh, uh, we celebrated in a big way because we launched our company 10 years ago on Mother's Day as a gift to moms. And that year we did like 115,000 in sales. And this year we're gonna do like 150 million. So. We've come a long way. I mean, we used to be so broke and scrappy, and we have all of these stories of literally like not having enough money to eat. So it's, it was a huge, huge day. And um, I also I went to, I shopped at Shoprite, um, like by I went by myself and bought groceries. So it was, it was like a, a real mom day, but <laughs> like celebrating. And I got my son. I bought actually a lot of our products at the grocery store, um, that totally made my son happy. So. 
Stephanie, Stephanie really just had her first Mother's Day ever. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Stephanie. Special. Very nice. I think to add to that, you know, my... Shazi, Zana, Randy, thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank and um, every day should be Mother's Day with you ladies. Yeah, for everyone. <laughs>